Now, I can't imagine that I'm alone in being a little bit surprised that Jay Lethal made his debut with AEW at full gear on Saturday. There was a lot of talk about, was Bray Wyatt going to come? You know, and that being the next big name in the focus. And out comes Jay Lethal. And he's challenging Sammy Guevara. And it was a bit of a surprise. It probably shouldn't have been a surprise because the reality is, is that if you're thinking about where a Jay Lethal would go after ROH basically has gone under and has released everybody, like, it makes sense that AEW would be a logical next destination for a Jay Lethal. Somebody that, you know, while he's not black machismo anymore, which still bothers me, um, it certainly makes sense because he's somebody that has a name, he has some recognition in that AEW fan base. People know him, they respect his work. Um, you know, he's been a former world champion in ROH, blah, 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 blah. You could also say that he fits well with the roster. Um, certainly, you know, work rate kind of guy, but can also bring a little bit of stick work, talking about his ability to talk on the mic and something that is somewhat lacking in that company. So they need more of what he can bring to the table. A credible, established black wrestler that doesn't get pushed because of his race, gets pushed in spite of his race because of the fact that he's a talented performer. He has legit cred. So they don't automatically just have to heal him out in order to decide they want to push him. He's also a guy that can talk. He could be a personality, which again, is something that AEW lacks. So he does represent on several different levels more of what that company needs. Now that said, if we're looking at this strictly from a wrestling standpoint, it was kind of weird to debut him like that on the pay-per-view, like right after that inner circle tag match, he's buried deep in the show, like felt kind of weird, but you know, one of those, hey, this is a nice, pleasant surprise kind of things. It's kind of weird that he's coming in and the first thing he wants to do is challenge for the TNT title. Like, I'm sorry, like, if you're coming in and being expected to be treated like a big deal, why would you go after a mid-card champion? And I know some of you are going to counter and say, well, the TNT championship is not a mid-card championship. Give me a fucking break. You only have one world title. That means you only have one main event title, period. You're not reinventing wrestling history or the wrestling landscape with goddamn AEW, so stop it. The TNT title can be a serious, credible title and is totally the mid-card title. Like We all know this, so let's not pretend like it isn't. So it's weird that he would come in and he wanted to be going after a second-class belt. Just weird. And then also looking at this strictly from a wrestling standpoint, does AEW really need any more talent at this point? Like, don't they have enough roster glut at this time? I'd say yes. Now, certainly you could put other people out of the way because Jay Lethal would certainly deserve a spot. And from a strictly wrestling standpoint, I would certainly prioritize him over a lot of others that actually get consistent television time for AEW. So I get it there. Now, some of you watched my full gear review and were like, why didn't he acknowledge this debut? Why didn't he talk about this? Because I didn't really want to there. Because I wanted to circle back to it. Because unfortunately, we all know this to be true, the signing of Jay Lethal by AEW does not just consider wrestling in a wrestling standpoint. There are other things there. While it'd be nice to pretend like some of your favorite wrestlers don't potentially either have some baggage or some skeletons in the closet or some questionable things about their past, the reality is that quite a number do. And when you look at Jay Lethal, like it comes with some potential baggage. I'm not saying it's automatically baggage, but potential baggage that needs to be talked about. If you remember a couple of years ago, the whole speaking out movement when it came to professional wrestling, you had the allegations le levied by Taylor Hendricks back in 2018. I think it was something to the effect, and if I'm missing some of the scope of it, I do apologize. But she said she was being deep pushed because she wouldn't sleep with Jay Lethal, that he was trying to leverage his position of power over her to get what he wanted. And when he didn't get it, when she didn't play with the big boy, so to speak, um, that it was the end of her career and the end of her push effectively and all of that. Then if you remember back last year, I think it was like summertime last year, you had Kelly Klein, another former ROH talent, 
uh, who levied more allegations against Jay Lethal, called him out specifically on Twitter, that he had complaints, not only apparently directly referencing the Taylor Hendricks situation and allegations, but saying that he had multiple multiple complaints about him levied um, that went to ROH, and ROH tried to sweep it under the rug, tried to cover it up, and so forth. So, unfortunately, whether the allegations are true or the allegations are false, the one thing we can't do is pretend like those allegations aren't there. And it's unfortunate when you see something like this, like you should, it would be nice to be able to just strictly from a wrestling standpoint look at this and say, hey, that's cool, Jay Lethal's an AEW. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Which is why I wanted to talk about it in a separate video. Now let's start off here. To those dudes and those individuals that are going to sit there and try and say, I don't want to see a great wrestler canceled because of something that's flawed. A, what if they're true? Yo, know, I wonder for some of these guys out there, if it was true, would it really make a difference? Would it really? And the answer is, is I don't think it would. They'd still care more about what he could do in the ring. They care more about him as a wrestler than maybe care about the fact that he's a creepy sexual exploitation motherfucker. So what if they are true? I mean, it's not so easy. Now, I see quite a number of men that have opined on Twitter that, you know, they don't think he's guilty or these allegations have been proven largely false. And I'm trying to figure out where they're drawing that conclusion. Now, I could have missed stuff in doing some of my internet searching to prepare for this video. The reality is, is there's a lot of noise about something like this. And it can be really hard to sift through the bullshit and get to the truth. Because unfortunately, many things the internet represents that can be good, many more it represents that can be bad, and one of them is confirmation bias. The internet can be leveraged, levied in a way, leveled in a way, excuse me, to confirm your own personal biases. If you think that Jay Lethal is 100% innocent and ladies like Taylor Hendricks and Kelly Klein are lying asses, then you're going to seek out information or data that fully supports that opinion, that perspective, that bias. And you're not going to care about anything else. Now let's be clear though. If Jay Lethal actually did these things that he was accused of, then fuck him. He should never work for a major wrestling company again. It should not be that hard. It shouldn't be. And I worry sometimes that some of the wrestling fans that I see, especially some of the male wrestling fans, that these allegations could be true and I don't know that they would fucking care. And that's shameful. Now that's not the only shameful behavior here. Because you also have, opposite of this kind of toxic masculinity, you have this toxic feminazi culture where just because somebody was accused just because somebody had allegations levied against them, that automatically makes them true and makes them a bad person. And that is fucking bullshit that also should be fought against. The whole, I believe victims and I stand with victims. Were they proven to be victims? If they weren't, then stop calling them victims. You could say that you stand with the alleged victims. That's fair. But to flat out skip the alleged and go straight to victim is basically you're damning or judging the person that's accused without them potentially getting their own day in court. And that's fucking wrong. I don't give a shit what the crime is. Part of the purpose of our system, allegedly, although we know it doesn't apply equally for sure, is that the accused have their day in court. So to sit there and say that I automatically believe the victims. Fuck you, you're a problem too. Because you're contributing to the lack of polite and proper discourse that be, can be had on a topic like this because you just automatically want to man-hate on every fucking thing. And I realize coming from a white cocko male, that is going to sound like I'm mansplaining or man-shaming. Fuck you though if you can't handle that. Because it's true. 
alleged victims, accusers absolutely deserve to be heard and listened to. Their allegations, their claims deserve to have a rigorous investigation. You will notice there at no point in time am I denying them the right to have a chance to have their day in court to see potentially justice for themselves in whatever way that manifests in no way, shape, or form, or I'm, am I saying that because they're the accusers and they're female that they're automatically lying or anything like that? That also doesn't have to be the case whatsoever. There are plenty of bad people in this world, plenty of bad men in this world. But to sit there and make that leap that you automatically believe them, that's a fucking problem and that needs to stop. They deserve to be heard. They deserve to be listened. They do not automatically deserve to be believed just because they make an allegation. And to some of those female dipshits out there that can't grasp this, imagine if you had a son and some woman came forward and said, oh, your son was a sexual assaulter. Your son was a sexual harasser. He used, leveraged and used his position of power to exploit me. Are you automatically going to take her side or are you going to want to hear your son's side or potentially even just take your son's side because it's your damn son? It'd be funny how different it would work in those circumstances, you hypocritical cunts. So to all these idiots that are sitting there and saying, well, frankly, I don't care if Jay Lethal did it or not. He's a great wrestler. I don't want to see him get canceled. If he did the shit he was accused of, he deserves to be fucking canceled. And if you aren't down with that, then fuck you. Period. And to those that want to sit there, both male and female, and say automatically, because allegations and accusations were made, that Jay Lethal is guilty and should be canceled, even though you don't know, even though you don't have any type of real full trial that I can recall that has went down to prove the validity or invalidity of these allegations, even though you weren't there, so you don't fucking know, and anything you're hearing is second, third, fourth hand sourcing bullshit, if you're trying to cancel him automatically without having done the proper due diligence, then fuck you too. Because you're contributing to every bit as much of the problem here. And to sit there and pretend like no woman ever lies is fucking bullshit. It is very valid to question, hey, with Taylor Hendricks, she really hasn't been booked by any major promotions in the past couple of years. What the hell could be the cause of that? It absolutely could be that she got blackballed by the industry because Jay Lethal put out the bad word on her and did some type of character assassination hit job. That is absolutely true. It could also be that there are other things that you don't fucking know about. It could also be that she priced herself out. It could be that other companies look at her like an AEW, WWE, and they don't really see what value she could bring potentially for the price that she commands. That could also be true. It could be none of those things. It could be a combination of all. Sometimes it's an example of, if we don't know, instead of doing what we do, which is giving an ill-informed dipshit opinion, we should just shut the fuck up. And as far as like the Kelly Klein, I don't know. She could be right. She may very well be. She could also be wrong and have an axe to grind and be full of shit. Either of those are true. And that's where we get into the real sticky spot here. Because until there is some type of day in court, until you have some pretty rock solid proof that something has happened, you're either going to get into the denial it's automatically not true because it's a woman making the allegation, which is bullshit, or it's the it absolutely is true because women are always to be believed over men and <laughs> bitch. Got something for you if that th you think that's true. Ah, the reality is it's really tough. And I understand why people might sit there and be really excited Jay Lethal is in AEW or might want to cancel him and cancel AEW because of it. The reality is we just don't know. At least as far as I know. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So fuck it be. It wouldn't be the first time. It wouldn't be the last time. But I think the discourse around this is very interesting and very problematic. You've got people more concerned about whether a guy could be a wrestler or not as opposed to whether or not he's a piece of shit human being or not. And you got people that automatically want to make him a piece of shit because he just has to be the bad guy here when they don't fucking know.
So react however the hell you want to, but the reality is right now, I'm conflicted when it comes to Jay Lethal and AEW because I don't fucking know. I can't pretend the allegations aren't there. But does that automatically mean just because somebody has an allegation or accusation levied against them that they shouldn't be able to apply their craft and be able to make a living, especially if those allegations haven't been proven true beyond a shadow of a doubt? I don't know. That's up to every wrestling fan and every fan that watches AEW to ultimately make their own decision. That's the best thing I could say at this point. From a wrestling standpoint, feels like a good hire, but comes into an already bloated roster. Unless I'm missing something here, like, I don't know how else we're supposed to approach this because, like, this is going to continue to be a thing. Allegations could be a thing, a situation of where there's smoke, there's fire. And when there's one, there's several more. True. Could also be that they're bullshit. The more allegations you get, the less bullshit they start to sound like. And that's true. There could very likely be something here. But unless we really know for sure, how the hell are we supposed to handle this? Assuming complete guilt or complete innocence feels wrong. And unfortunately, you're probably going to get too much of that. Too much of a polar split of all the one way or all the other. 